Welcome to the 2019 GC32 Racing Tour. No GC32 Racing Tour season is complete having visited the famous Lake Garda in northern Italy. Here the foiling catamarans will again be hosted by Fraglia Vela Riva at the lake's northern end. The race course off Riva del Garda is well known for its dramatic cliff face and thousand metre mountain peaks on its west shore as well as the typically strong wind and flat water conditions. It's the fifth time Lake Garda has hosted the foiling catamarans as part of the GC32 racing tour. It's my second time racing the GC here in Riva del Garda. Um, it's a fantastic, beautiful place to sail. Uh, it's quite difficult at times, you know, uh, the, the typical breeze that gets here, everyone knows you've got to bang the right hand side of the race course. But, uh, when everyone knows that and it's clear, it's uh, quite difficult to execute it with everybody going for the same thing. And then uh, at the beginning and end of the days when the breeze is building and dying, it's also uh, can change and then it's uh, very difficult to pick when that's happening. Surrounding, it's beautiful, uh, seriously. The wind is perfect, the uh, flat water is just what we need for these boats. It's a great pleasure to be coming here. Uh, we very much enjoy it. And, and especially Riva, I mean, I think, it's, it's made for these boats. Lake Garda is one of the most beautiful parts of the world for sailing. The wind goes one way or it goes the other way. Um, and from a race committee perspective, pretty well, it's, it's very reliable. Uh, we have waters that are 300 metres deep, so we have some challenges there of setting the course. But everyone knows it's, it's a very unique place to sail. The people in Riva at the club here are, are really helpful. They're very used to running high quality events, so you arrive, everything's really well prepared. The town is very beautiful, um, so when we're not sailing, we have a nice time, and there's loads of activities to go and do as well. So I think quite a few of the teams uh, have brought bikes or doing some trekking up the hills. So there's some big challenges around for a bit of fun as well. Seven teams were on the starting line for the GC32 Reba Cup. The heavyweight battle at the top of the leaderboard was between the Adam Minoprio skipper de Marnair and Ernesto Bertorelli's Alinghi, helmed this week by Swiss ace Arno Sarafagas. These two teams sit on the top of the leaderboard on equal points after three of the five events this season. There's very little between them, as shown at the previous stop at the Copa del Rey Map Free, where we witnessed a unique match race between them. With uh, Oman Air, we have a big fight uh, the whole season, starting uh, Villa Simius, and uh, it's either them or us uh, beat uh, the other one and um, win the event. Uh, but uh, I think it's a really good uh, competition between the both teams because uh, it tries the game and uh, we, we need to, to push hard to stay ahead of them and uh, they do the same, so uh, both teams uh, rise their level, yeah. yeah. This year has been a good battle so far with the Lingi, with uh, us winning event, then them winning, then us winning, so uh, it's definitely tight between the two of us. We're both very uh, evenly matched teams. Coming into this event though, it's a uh, really consistent breeze here in Riva, so you know all the teams are gonna be able to uh, get race wins, so it's not only going to be managing a lingi, it's going to be managing the whole fleet, but uh, we're definitely going to be going out there with an eye on a lingi to make sure we try to stay ahead of them. I think uh, what we do better than Omana, it's uh, we sell more often together as a team and uh, we may be more consistent in uh, critical parts, but uh, I think Omana sell really well and they are really strong as well. So. Uh, we can't say one team is better than the other one, it's uh, more when uh, one have a bad race, the other one for sure have a good one. We've been about seven really, We've, um, we're a new team this year and uh, Lingi have been the same guys for three or four years sailing together so we're a new team and you know, we've had a lot of learning with that. Um, had a bit of luck in the first event and then uh, we've been getting better and better as the events go on but still 
we've got a lot more to improve. At the world we were about at nine, and uh, in Palma we were at like six, and for every year we close to eight, so uh, I think we need to rise that to be able to win. While one of these two teams is likely to take the overall 2019 GC32 Racing Tour title, the fight for third is looking less certain. Heading into the Riva del Garda event, holding third with the Austrian Olympic Tornado double gold medalists Roman Hagara and Hans-Peter Steinacker and their Red Bull sailing team. Let's find out more about Roman and his partnership with Red Bull over the years. Actually, we started uh, Olympic sailing and uh, our sponsor at these days was uh, Red Bull. So in 90, 1993, we started uh, with Red Bull as a partner and uh, we kept them until now. So uh, we are actually the Red Bull sailing team and uh, built up the whole team. So uh, we had a lot of uh, things around it. We did some, some youth programs. We did uh, the Youth America's Cup. Uh, we did a lot of uh, things with the Red Bull uh, sailing team. So uh, it's a really nice project and a really strong team. The history of the Red Bull sailing team is that we started in the Olympic Games, won uh, two, two gold medals in the tornado. And then after 2008, uh, we switched to the big boat circuit. Uh, we started with the extreme sailing series. And uh, now we are here in the GC tour with the foiling multi -hulls. So it's uh, a nice uh, history of the, of the sailing team and uh, of uh, all the story behind. And uh, I think, yeah, looking forward for the next years. Actually, uh, it was some years ago in France with a flying Phantom and uh, it was a bit strange because we were used to no foiling boats and uh, you had to go in the non-foiling boats way back but now on the foiling boats you go way forward so it's a completely opposite and also the behavior of the boat like when, uh, when it's healing to windward is uh, completely different to what you're sailing normally so it was a, a bit strange feeling. But we got a uh, quick use to it and uh, we liked it and especially the speed is unbelievable what you do on these boats. I grew up on a lake, it's close to Vienna, it's Lake Neusiedlersee and uh, there I started actually with windsurfing. So that was my first contact with the water sport and uh, then uh, we changed to sailing and then I started sailing and racing. Top-level sailors race these top-level boats, the flying one-design GC32 catamarans. In the previous episode, we took an in-depth look at the foils and just how they work, and also the safety gear which is required for all of the crew. In this episode, we explore how these high boat speeds are achieved. The GC32 foiling catamaran is suitable for high-octane flight in almost all conditions and different sized sails ensure that the teams have the right amount of power to keep flying in various wind strengths. We've got uh, four sails on the GC32. We've got two jibs, which are the smaller sails at the front, and then we've got a Jenica, which is the big sail right at the front off the end of the pole, and then obviously the main sail. Uh, when it's below 10 knots of wind speed, we use basically uh, the big jib the mainsail and the Jenica, upwind and downwind. It's probably the worst case scenario for the crew. It's generally a lot of work. Everything's quite highly loaded. And then as soon as it gets above 10 knots, we're into just the big jib and uh, mainsail for upwind. And then when we sail downwind, we're obviously with the Jenica as well. Uh, as soon as we start increasing in wind speed to above sort of 12 to 14 knots, we then go to the small jib. Uh, which then we use upwind with the mainsail and then when we sail downwind obviously we use the Jenica again. If it starts getting even windier and windier, sometimes we don't use the Jenica downwind. Mm -hmm. 
GC32 catamarans allow regular sailors, both pros and keen amateurs, to experience firsthand the latest, fastest style of sailing on flying, foil-borne catamarans at 30 plus knots of speed. At the same time, the GC32 Racing Tour gives a unique experience to VIP guests who can join and be part of the racing. Um, it, it was really cool. It was really cool. It was amazing. Um, I wasn't expecting anything, like I wasn't prepared probably. So I didn't know what to expect, but it was, it was actually very exciting. It's, uh, it's the speed, it's the, uh, the G-force when they turn, it's the fact you're so high, uh, and especially it's the, um, it's the fact it's not noisy. You know, obviously I'm, I'm used to speed and noise. Obviously, you have an engine when you're on a car. Uh, there's, there's, there's nothing like uh, like this. So it's really you're really fast, but it's actually really quiet. So all you hear is the wind, the the water underneath. But it's quite um, it's quite something. The massive team job is a teamwork. Like everybody has to do it together. So uh, if one does something, the other one has to do it at the same time and just be the perfect match. So uh, that is really, really a, a team effort, so to say. Uh, and I would say the speed uh, as a passenger. But also I know that behind it there's a lot of technology. There's a lot of, um, you know, it's, it's the pinnacle of, of, of sailing, I would say. So there's a lot of, uh, of work and, and, you know, similarities with, uh, with Formula One, I would say. It's a fact that GC32 is a great boat to sail. It develops an amazing acceleration. When it starts foiling, it's a feeling of from another planet. I mean, the, the size of the boat and the weight of the boat and when it develops the whole momentum. You know, when you're flying along at 35 knots and uh, one mistake can cost you, cost you the race and so you've got to make sure you're always on your game and always uh, you know, trying to stay ahead of what's happening next so you can um, keep the manoeuvres smooth and keep the speeds up. The boat is incredible. The boat is a lot of fun. It's very fast. It makes everybody on the boat work. I've been doing sailing for a long time. This is as good as it gets, I mean seriously. I don't see, I can't think of anything else I would be, I would want to do uh, sailing wise anyway. In order for the GC32 cats to show off their phenomenal speeds, they need a secure race course. The GC32 class organizers couldn't achieve this without the support of the local authorities at each event. It's a great support to have the Squadra Nautica, the, the water police here with us. They keep the race course safe and, and clear. And that's a big job here on Lake Garda with so many other sailing regattas, with so many surfers, kite surfers, uh, and uh, they're out there with uh, one uh, police boat and 10 uh, jet skis helping us uh, to secure the course. From regatta. They've been with us since the beginning, since the GC32 came to Lake Arda since 2016. And having them here with us makes a whole difference. I don't think we could do the event without them. Sharpen the trailing net. Ah. Trying to. <laughs> yeah, it's too noisy. Okay, so let's get back to the racing action at the 2019 GC32 Reaver Cup. With moderate breeze and upwind starts, the teams completed five intense races on the opening day of the GC32 Reaver Cup. 
The day, however, was complex with all seven of the teams leading at some point during the day. At its conclusion, Alinghi was the most consistent team, holding a four-point advantage over second-placed Red Bull sailing team, who won the day's final race. Just two points astern, sitting in third overall, was Frenchman Eric Maris with his Zulu team having had a great day on the water. They took an early lead in the owner driver's division, ahead of Argo's Jason Carroll, winner of the day's third race. The day was fantastic for everyone. The conditions, the surrounding, uh, perfect. Racing was just fantastic. And we had some good results. The boys on the boat did a fantastic job. Uh, our tactician did some you know, good calls. Uh, we were fast. You know, probably we were very lucky as well. We'll see tomorrow. Jason Carroll and his Argo team started the second racing day in great shape, scoring a bullet and a third in the opening two races, fighting neck and neck with the event's leaders. However, a sixth in the final race prevented the American team from improving their position in the overall results. Making the biggest move up the leaderboard was Adam Minoprio and Amman Air. Outstanding performances saw them come second in race one before winning the following two races. Red Bull sailing team with indifferent results dropped to fourth place overall, allowing the Amani team to climb from yesterday's fourth to second place overall, four points astern of the leaders Alinghi. I mean, we had two very good starts, which uh, helped us to win the first race and uh, finishing third the second race. So uh, it's a very tight fleet, very short course, so you really need a good start to, to have a shot at the podium. The penultimate day of the GC32 Riva Cup started with three early morning races in strong northerly winds. Amman Air started where they left off from the previous day with a bullet and a second place. The team moved into the top spot on the leaderboard before a premature start in race three resulted in a sixth place finish. This mistake handed Alinghi the opportunity to regain first place. With three more races in the afternoon, Amman Air did their best to close the gap on Alinghi, winning the final race. However, the Swiss team made no mistakes and with two bullets and a third, they finished with the same four-point advantage over Amman Air as they had held at the beginning of the day. Red Bull sailing team, determined to make it back onto the podium, recovered third place overall, whilst the lead owner-driver team, Eric Maris's Zulu, dropped to fourth. Today we had a pretty long day on Lake Garda here. Uh, we sailed already in the morning, three races, and now three races again in the afternoon with the Aura, so it was a pretty tough day. But uh, we did uh, quite well. I mean, uh, we had, uh, I think, one first place and some second places. So it was good, we catched up some points, uh, Zulu especially, and then, I don't know, overall probably also uh, looks not so bad. While Alinghi might have led from the start of the 2019 GC32 Reaper Cup, the Swiss team was on the ropes on the final day with their main rivals, Amman Air, in seemingly unbeatable form. Scoring three back-to-back -back wins, they levelled the scoreline heading into the very final race of the regatta. Amman Air had the momentum, but after a long day, a chink finally appeared in their armour in the deciding race. Both the Lingi and Red Bull sailing team finished ahead and after a nail-biting final few minutes where Amana desperately tried to catch up, these positions held at the finish line, causing the two front runners to end the GC32 Riva Cup tied on points. Sadly for Amana, after such a strong final day, GC32 Racing Tour tie breaks are decided on the final race positions. Victory at the GC32 Riva Cup was a Lindy's. We started well and uh, had three wins on the trot and then um, 
we managed to stay ahead of Lingi, of the Lingi all those races and we made sure we kept an eye on them. We reached around the race course a bit just to make sure we tried to punish them and push them back in the fleet but they did a great job of um, you know, having some bad starts and then near last place at the reach mark to clawing back to thirds and seconds and uh, they did enough to, to make it come down to the last race and um, fortunately for us the, the last race uh, was going well but we just missed a jibe um, after the reach mark and that cost us, cost us dearly, it allowed them to jump ahead and us to lose out to uh, Red Bull and um, yeah, and cost us the regatta unfortunately. Today was a uh, really uh, tight racing uh, with Oman Air. As they were said really well and uh, they put us uh, in a bad situation. But uh, we knew it was not over until the last race. We could just uh, overlap them on the downwind and uh, push them uh, back uh, in the fleet. And uh, Red Bull did a good job to stay ahead. So it just, uh, we equal on point, but uh, the, the wind come back to us. So uh, it was good uh, to finish the day like that. Roman Agara and Red Bull sailing team had an impressive final day, putting extra points between them and Eric Maris's Zulu, ensuring that they retained the final position on the podium. Owner Eric Maris and his crew on Zulu won the Owner Drivers Trophy. Jason Carroll and his Argo team from the United States scored two thirds, but being less consistent than his rival, they were unable to overtake Zulu in the owner driver's ranking. Meanwhile, the ferocious fighting ahead of them ensured that Christian Zurera's Black Star sailing team and Argentinian Federico Ferrioli's Cadijo Rocco racing had to make do with their own private competition. That's always a great uh, moment, I think. Also when we had uh, the second race yesterday morning and finished third. So that means we are able to catch them, but just missing against Alinghi, Oman, Red Bull. They are sailing so many times together. In this fleet, it's a snap on a, on a bad maneuver, on a tack, on a jibe, and you lose 50 meters or something, 100 meters, and it's so really hard to get back to them. With only one event, the fight for the top prizes in the 2019 GC32 Racing Tour is still on. Amman is to host the final and deciding event of the 2019 GC32 Racing Tour. With the home team so well placed to fight for the overall GC32 Racing Tour title, Muscat will be an exciting conclusion to the season. The capital city will extend a warm welcome to the fleet of high-performance foiling catamarans as they race for the inaugural GC32 Amman Cup. Well, for the last event, we'll be going to Muscat Oman. It will be the GC32 Oman Cup in the first week of November. And we had a very nice offer from uh, Oman Sail. And they're also class members uh, since a long time, uh, um, campaigning one boat on the racing tour. And uh, it was uh, clear to us that also with us wanting to go outside of Europe at the beginning of the European winter, that Oman would be a very nice and good choice. And we're looking very much forward to go there. Oh. Yeah. Hang about a mask for a little. Ready? Yeah, you know, feeling good, warming up. Ready? Ready? Yeah, Can I go now? Yeah. Feel down the start line. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. 